Hello, this is Pastor Steven Anderson from Faith Forward Baptist Church in Tempe, Arizona. Today we're going to be going over John 1, verse 8 from the Greek New Testament. Let's go ahead and look at it in Greek here. Uk in akinos tophos alina matirisi peri tufotos. Now in English, this verse says, He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Talking about John the Baptist. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. Let's look at this word by word in Greek. Uk is another form of the word that we've already seen, u. Uk means not. In means was. You should remember that from John 1 1. In the beginning was the word. And our he, in, ologos. So uk, in means was not. Uk, in, ekinos, tophos. Now we know tophos means the light. Ekinos, we, we briefly mentioned in the lesson on demonstrative pronouns. Uh, for John chapter 1, verse 2, when we talked about utos in anarchi proston theon, utos was that demonstrative pronoun normally translated as this or this one. Ekinos is actually the opposite of that because it means that or that one. You know, in English, the opposite of this is that. Well, in Greek, you have utos and you have ekinos. Now, notice the ending here of ekinos is the masculine singular nominative case ending. So what this is saying here, literally in Greek, is that one, talking about John, who we just mentioned, that one was not the light. That one was not the light. Al means but, okay? And notice it has an apostrophe right here because actually the word is Allah. Allah means but. But because we've dropped the alpha and run it together with the next word, there's an apostrophe there showing that something's missing. So this gets run together as alina martirisi. So, but in order that, we, we learned this word in the lesson on John 1, 7. But in order that, martirisi, we've got the telltale yota subscript telling us that this is a subjunctive verb in order that he might bear witness, peri tu photos, about the light. So literally, word by word, what this is saying is, that one was not the light, but in order that he might bear witness about the light. Now, that does not sound right in English. That is not a proper English sentence to say, that one was not the light, but in order that he might bear witness about the light. Uh, the, the second part of that sentence is not grammatically correct in English if we were to do it that way. Which is why in the King James Version, again, you will see italicized words added, was sent. Okay? Because in, and remember in English, the verse said, he was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light but was sent to bear witness. Now, the verb bear witness is right here, martirisi, in order that he might bear witness about the light or of the light. But there is no verb sent in this passage, which is why sent is in italics in the King James Version. It's not just a word that's just been added to the Bible, randomly adding words to Scripture, because the word sent is found earlier in the passage. Remember, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. So it's not that the King James translators have just randomly added a word here. What they're doing is they're repeating the word sent from a few verses ago in order to make the sentence in English make sense and to be a grammatically correct, easily understandable sentence. See, always taking just the most rigidly literal word-for-word -word translation is not right. For example, for those of you who speak Spanish, if you want to say in Spanish, my name is Steven, normally you would say, me llamo Esteban. But me llamo Esteban is actually literally translated as, I call myself Steven. But if somebody showed up in America and said, hello, I call myself Steven, you would instantly know, hey, this person is a foreigner. They're not speaking very good English. So when the Bible is translated into English, Obviously, we don't want to change the meaning. Obviously, we don't want to add or take away from God's Word and corrupt God's Word in that way. But it does need to be, need to be translated into proper English.
and it needs to be translated in such a way that it is understandable in our native English tongue. You know, otherwise, we could just put the whole Greek New Testament into Google Translate and say, well, there you go, we've translated the New Testament. But it would come out sounding awful. And by the way, a lot of these new versions like the NIV, the New American Standard, they sound awful because they're just poorly translated. So the great thing about the King James is that they make it sound good without changing the meaning, without corrupting God's Word, giving a 100% accurate, perfect translation, not changing the meaning at all, not taking away from or adding to what God is saying, but putting it in good, beautiful, poetic English. So what we have here, Akinos, meaning that one, referring to the guy that we just talked about, uh, that one was not the light, but in order that he might bear witness about the light is what those words mean individually. But in English we have, he was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. And we get the exact same meaning in an English sentence that sounds good and makes sense. Uh, the word sent that is in italics in the King James is coming from the earlier verse where the word was apestalmenos, if you remember that word sent in the original Greek. So the word sent is in the original Greek. It's just a few verses earlier. It needs to be repeated in this verse in order to make a good English sentence. So again, let me read the whole verse for you. Uk in ekinos tophos, alina martirisi peri tufotos. Next lesson, we will work on John 1, verse 9.